So I'm at my parents' house. They have a closet right here. They decided they want an outlet inside the closet. We don't normally put one in, especially this size of closet, but they want one, so here we go. I'm actually gonna use this switch. We run all of our power wires through switches. That way we don't have any power in light fixtures, so we don't have to take apart lights. So I'm actually gonna feed out of this light switch. On the back side, I'm gonna go down a little ways and mount an outlet on the back side of this. They got an outlet in there. Let's see it happen. All right, so opening this switch box up, you always have a switch leg that goes to the light. That is this wire that is by itself. It comes directly from the Romex right to the switch. This other wire where it's pigtailed here is obviously the power. It's power coming in, sending out to another one, and then it's on the switch. What I'm going to do now is If you ever need to know where a stud is on a wall or reference studs like 16 inches on center, you can always just pull a cover plate off and here's what you're looking for. All right, so because I know that dimple is right there, I know that the stud's on this side. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm going to take a long screwdriver. Remember, this is hot. I know, bitch. I'm gonna take this long screwdriver. I'm gonna poke this out and then I'm actually going to take this screwdriver poke through the, the drywall on the other side there's my screwdriver so because I know that there's a Joe on this side of that hole you see what I did there stud I can use one of these smart boxes that will screw directly to that stud I'll be good to go with this box that's why I don't need a cut-in box I don't know exactly where the stud is I'm gonna use my jab saw to figure that out I'm just gonna go in this hole right here cut over to the stud so now I'm gonna go up to where this sheetrock is damaged. And that's gonna be the top of my box. So now that I know where this stud is, I can just cut along that for a little ways. And then I know how to orientate my box. So I'm gonna go like this. And I know some of you are saying, well, why aren't you using a level? Well, I don't need a level because it's just gonna go right onto that stud. The studs are always level, right? When you're using a jab saw, you always have to remember that the cutting is in. If you're cutting and pulling out, like pushing down with pressure and pulling out, it will tear this paper kind of like that is. You never want to cut out like this. You always want to push in and cut. And then lift up, in and cut, in and cut. Woo! If I were to cut this all the way up and then try to jam this jab saw in, this has a tendency to break. So while I've still got some integrity in this drywall, I'm gonna start this side right now. So now I don't have to worry about that break. And the most common part of this paper tearing is when you get right towards the end. So like I was saying with that down, you're always cutting when you're pushing in and you get a perfect cut every time. As you can see, no paper's torn. It's a great cut. It's just a great cut, it's a great cut. I'm just gonna use 14 too, because that's what's feeding it. So I'm just gonna push this down. That's right in line. Now the reason that I went out the bottom of that box is because this wall is only a two by four thick. There's not enough room for both of those boxes. This height on this receptacle doesn't really matter. He didn't care, he just wanted a receptacle in here. That's why I went out of the bottom of that box right into here. And now this can be installed. Now you're gonna watch me do this with my strippers. Remember, I'm a professional. I've been doing this for 20 years. All I'm gonna do if you ever strip like this I'm just gonna score this insulation. It doesn't cut through at all. It just scores it, it puts a mark on it. So then you can just take it, move it around, and it just breaks right off like that. So now I don't have to strip that on the outside. If you're not comfortable doing that, don't do it, because you can short the wires that way. I like to have this box recessed just a little bit. Don't try to get it flush. It usually doesn't work out well for you. Just gonna line these screws up on this stud. And that is why that box is awesome. So you always wanna make sure your insulation's sticking in there about a quarter inch, which it is. Now I can make this outlet up. Strip about an inch off, make loops. Anytime you're doing receptacles where there's only one wire, always, always, always get rid of that unused screw. Now another thing to watch out for on these receptacles 
If you ever have copper sticking out past this plastic part, you need to redo it. You never want copper showing. In addition to that, you never want to have this insulation underneath that screw. So it needs to be all copper under the screw and then no copper past this plastic part, about an eighth of an inch there. Another thing when you're wrapping these wires, I'm not an advocate to stabbing the back of these outlets because it's not a good connection, so always wrap around the screws. When you're wrapping these, always wrap it around as it tightens. So don't go the other way because it could loosen that connection a little bit. All right, so I got that outlet done. I know I have a cover plate, I'm just gonna have to have dad grab one and throw one on there for me. Now to the outside where I've got this switch. So as I said, the switch is hot to keep from getting shocked. I'm just gonna tape this up. So this is gonna allow me to work with this freely and not worry about getting shocked. If you're uncomfortable at all doing any of this hot, do not do it. Call a professional, shut the breaker off, do whatever you need to do. When you're stripping this Romex here, you're just gonna go down the middle of it. Ways, and you can expose it there and then cut below the wires. That's going to ensure that you don't touch those wires at all. So now you can see that it's kind of a mess here. Twist all these together. We're going to put a wire nut on this because you don't want those exposed there. Those right there. And I can put a wire nut on this. Then that can secure it's tied so now the ground is done one thing about working with wires hot is you never want to tie a neutral in unless it's been twisted which I'm pretty sure this is so I'm just gonna twist this on top of it might get a little flickers here neutrals done and I got the hot wire same thing the one thing you want to remember with hot wires is you're not gonna get shocked unless you come in contact with the ground just kidding I am on wood, so I can touch this all I want and not get shocked. Now, when I do get shocked is when I touch this metal strap because that metal strap is grounded. So you never want to come in contact with the hot and the ground. I'm on subfloor, I'm on wood, hardwood floor. I'm not going to get shocked touching this. You don't believe me? It's hot. It's hot. Okay? It's hot. Tuck back in. Test it out. Get something, plug it into that outlet, shut this light off, and then give it a test. And we're working. If that doesn't come on and only comes on when you flip the switch on, then you tie it into the switch leg. You need to put the wire on the hot and the other wire to the switch leg. That's how it's done. And remember, be an electrician. Don't clean your mess.